Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, as we are outdoors so much, it's a good time to talk a little bit about yellow jackets and wasps. Joining me this morning is Daniel Mackey of Greenleaf Pest Control. Uh, we'll tell everybody we're really good friends. We talk about this all the time. Uh, you know, we're going to start off just because I want to talk about what you found just the other day that stimulated this conversation. Okay. And that's that right there. Yep. So bald-faced hornet's nest that we actually, you can see how far along that nest is. I mean, normally this time of the year, the nest is smaller, almost like a, a cup. But because we had such a, a wet spring, mm -hmm. these nests are so far along. So it was really neat. It was on a ginkgo biloba tree, which you can see by yeah, the, you can leaves. See the leaves right there. Um, and it was really far along. So we ended up treating that nest, taking it, and bringing it in here. So for a neat demo, so you can see how large the nests can actually get. Yeah, nests are coming active right now. People are noticing them when they're outdoors. Uh, you have some different example of traps that people could purchase on their own. Right. So I, I wanted to bring uh, an example of, of sort of some of your commercial traps. So right. this is uh, a yellow jacket trap you can take it you open it up so you cut the top out you hang it there's a pheromone in here right so you can add apple juice if you want or just water sometimes i find that the more sugary it is the more wasps that it actually catches they go in here at the very end of it you close it up so it's locked in place i still recommend because there's going to be live wasps double tie it take it and throw it away so that the wasps don't spill out and all of a sudden you got wasps all over them just put it in the garbage i guess exactly throw it out in the garbage okay. here's another example another example catches a variety of different species of wasps, so it'll do like the yellow jackets and the bald-faced hornets. Same sort of thing, some liquid goes in here, there's a pheromone attractant, and off you go. And pheromone is actually like almost like a something uh, like almost like a cologne like a sex attraction <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it lures them all in thinking there's a party in here and they all head over and that's how you catch them get there. this is probably the oldest and simplest way if you're at a party and you need something quick solution just a pop can yeah this is great this is you know you're at a picnic somewhere out you're having some wasps you just take you know this is happens to be soda you can take some jam and put it in with some water you flip it upside down so you invert it and then as they go in to get it they can't get out so it's a pitfall style trap the biggest thing we have to remember is don't place these on your picnic table because you're going to attract the wasp to where you're eating. So take it and put it away from where you are so you're pushing them away or, or taking them away from where you're eating. That's the important thing. Frank. So let's let's say that we have a nest. We know where the nest is. We know where they're going to. Now we want to treat that area. Yep. Uh, when is it safe to do so? So at night's always the best time because they're, they're the least active. And you can do a few simple things. You can even grab your vacuum or shop vac. So if you have a, a nest like this and the wasps are going in and out and happens to be in a hedge, you can just tape your vacuum or put the vacuum hose, a shop vac right up to it you can suck them in as they're going in and out and eliminate them that way but if you really need to get it knocked down quickly or it's too high for you to do practically do it there's some great products either a foam product or a, or a liquid aerosol product that you can actually shoot into the nest and, and treat it but night is the best time because they're the least active and always protect yourself something like a, a bug net or a hat something like that you put over to protect yourself from getting stung and what do we have here is that uh, uh, myself being uh, anaphylactic or, or allergic to, to yellow jacket stings particularly, I always carry my EpiPen, so you know, always safety first. So when do you call a professional like yourself? When's a good time that, that it's just too big of a job? It's just maybe something that somebody shouldn't be doing on yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's about your comfort level. I mean, it's something you can try it. Yeah. If it's something you feel you, can, you, want, you want to try and you know where the nest is, you can usually treat yourself. Sometimes you know, we'll have people treat a hole specifically where the wasps are going inside of a brick and they just can't seem to eliminate. They call the professionals. We have all the right tools. We can get to certain heights. You don't have to get up on ladders. So it's about your comfort level and also about working safely. Yeah, and you know we were using a sweet as an attractive, but something that's interesting. I was at a recent party, and and it was chicken. They were all yeah, going out the chicken. They love the protein, right? Protein and carbohydrates, depending on the time of the year, right? So that now as we get things, the weather starts to get a little bit cooler. Right now, this protein's high. It's making good production, good babies, good egg production. But as we start to get closer to fall, the resources become less and less available. Carbohydrates to overwinter. Just so like us. we'll start to see them come a little bit closer to us as the temperatures get yeah. cooler. Yeah, this time of the year, they're not really too concerned about us this time of the year, but as it gets cooler, vegetation starts to die off, the aphids start to die off, there's less food. All of a sudden, our picnic goods, are, this is where people start getting stung, they have a you know, drink of soda, the wasps get in there. It usually becomes a, more of a problem later on in the season. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, for more information, go to greenleafpestcontrol.com or you can tweet Daniel at greenleafpest.ca to not being bit this season. Thanks again, Daniel. Cool. Thank okay. you. We'll see you guys right after the break. Still lots more to come. It's good. It's good. I love this.